I've never seen this before. In a high school football game in San Antonio between John Jay and Marble Falls, two football players were ejected and now have been suspended for running into the back of a referee who was watching a play. The ref's head snapped back when he was leveled from behind, then the other player dove on top of him. Even before the incident, two players were ejected on separate plays. The district would hear from game officials, coaches, and students during an upcoming due process hearing. Marble Falls coach Matt Green said, Jay's coach Gary Gutierrez apologized after the game. I've coached 14 years and I've never seen anything like it, Green said. The referee was very upset and wanting to press charges. Kate. What is your reaction to this high school targeting refs? I, I've never seen anything like that, just, just like you said. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I need more context and more information. Not because I think there's anything that anybody could say that would change what, I, what, what just happened. But like a lot of things that happen in our society now, a lot of like public shaming we take part in, once you pull back a little bit, you actually have more context about maybe why somebody, think somebody posted something on Facebook or Twitter. And that does not justify the actual post or what happened, but it does provide you a little bit more of a lens so you can at least see somebody's motivation. Because right now, without any motivation or any understanding or any understanding of who these guys are, who their what their history is, anything about them, it's hard to just scream, get them out of here, be gone. Because I think that's an overreaction that we even talk about a lot at the NFL level and the college football level when we see guys commit crimes. And, and there's a lot of people who would tell you that that's a crime. What they did is cut them, get them out of here. No form of rehabilitation of any kind. Let's not talk to them. They're just gone from the program. In which case, I think, you're not even addressing the space from where this behavior came from. You're simply removing the offenders and saying get out of here and leaving the space as is which you could say created this I don't know and we don't know yet that's where you need the context was it the high school football culture in Texas was it this specific team was this an issue just honestly was this an anomaly was it a complete anomaly all of this context we don't have yet which is where you can't really go and say get these guys out of here completely at least I can't say that because I don't really believe in that type of outrage as being beneficial one to the culture or to the individual players because you have to look broad term and be like what would be the ultimate end goal here one I would love if 10 years down the line these players understood a better way to react to things and to resolve situations rather than just cutting them loose and not learning that at all and two whatever culture and space helped create that behavior has also been changed in some small way so you and I agree on this except for one area, except for one caveat. First of all, the important part of agreeing right now is that this looks horrendous and we need to know more. As a lawyer, as someone who's been in the media, not just on the sports side, but in the news side where I've seen things that appear criminal end up being criminal, but yet we know so little about are overreacted to. And that has a real cost because the public decides on a conclusion without any information but what they initially see. And nothing has a worse track record. Nobody is worse at predicting than initial reaction. Mm -hmm. Initial reactions are so poor and inaccurate. This is why we have to be careful, because this is more than about being cut. This to me, clearly, if this is what we think it is, if it is what we see on this videotape, criminal. In Texas, there is a law that makes it a crime to assault a sports referee specifically. Now, largely that was designed to uh, stop parents from charging onto the field during Little League games oh, gosh. and yelling at refs or touching a ref. But this is even more than that. Those carry potentially 180 uh, days. This is pure assault, if it is what we think it is. And it could be aggravated assault. This could really have injured this referee. These guys are wearing pads and helmets. And what dictates the outcome of this is what a prosecutor in Marble Falls, Texas decides to do. If he wants to go after these guys, now we have to take their age into account. I'm sure they were young. Yeah, we don't even know that we information We don't yet. know that right. information. But theoretically, on the surface, looking at that video, this could be very serious, very criminally serious. So we want to make sure we get it right. To your point, get all of the context. Find out everything that was involved in that hit that looks, on its surface, just like two guys targeting a ref from behind. The second one, while he's down, spearing him with his helmet. The one place I disagree with you, I have trouble seeing anything larger than perhaps something with these players and this coach and maybe this squad. 
culture of football, drawing larger conclusions about violence in football, I have a huge amount of difficulty seeing how this could be tied to anything larger. And we have accepted that to some degree. We've accepted that football has a violent culture and creates human beings who are inherently violent in normal society as well. But that's not backed up by statistics, whether or not it's domestic violence or any other criminal category. When you look at, for example, the NFL versus the rest of society, mm -hmm. they under-index. And nobody says this. Nobody draws attention to the fact that the NFL, by and large, are model citizens compared to the rest of society. Doesn't mean there's not aberrations. Doesn't mean there's not bad guys. But you can't have a larger cultural problem if you're actually doing better than the rest of society. Yeah, but I, I completely stated beforehand that it's about the information in the context. Absolutely. And right. we agree on that. So uh, it's not if you told me this is an anomaly and we get all of the information and somehow these two guys independently of anything else or even decided the, to do this or even at the encouragement of their coach it doesn't in, it doesn't indict football right. at a larger degree even if their coach said go do this right and i didn't say let's talk about national nfl issues all i said was the space from which this behavior came these two players I want to understand the space right. that created this. Uh, so, so the space now, what could be, it could be the college, the team. I'm sorry, the high right. school football team. Maybe it's just the family, the the, the home. Maybe it's the you know the, the culture. Maybe it's the head of the two players. Right. Whatever the space is, maybe it was just them. That's right. where we need the context and information. But I just don't think once we have that, if it does point to a larger issue in that team or school then we need to address that. You can't just cut those players. I think that's fair. Often, so, the person on the surface that you see doing the deed is scapegoated for something that is much larger. I'll agree yeah. with you on that. I don't think it's a broader question of like violence in football, necessarily. Okay. But I do think there are spaces, and we've seen this before in Steubenville, Ohio, there are spaces created, and they are tangential with football, where there can be something toxic that's created. And that doesn't mean all of high school football is toxic. But in these certain little pockets, sometimes the confluence of those events leads to a toxic space where young men and women, depending on the, the sport they play, believe they can do something and believe they are untouchable by law. I think you're right. And even if there is, once we have the full story and all the details, it's never okay to tackle the refs. We, we can no, have that, more. Yes. Yeah, and that's never. what you guys never. are trying to say. It's never okay, but there might be there might be something to justify, you know, that we want them to channel their behavior. Well, it's right. truthfully, at this, more to and truthfully it. at this juncture, we don't even know if it was an accident. It doesn't yeah. look like yeah. an accident. No, you're There's right. nothing that suggests mm -hmm. it was an accident, but we need to make sure that's the case. Mm -hmm. I just want more context before moving forward. Yes. There's nothing. No. I don't think there's anything they could say or I could hear that would justify what happened mm -hmm. on the video. But going forward, right. let's hear more about their story and what premeditated this. Yeah, a hundred percent. As Stephen A. would say, cause for pause. That's what we have right now. We'll continue to react when we hear more on this. Meanwhile, week one in college football concludes tonight with the defending national champions. What was the biggest surprise so far? We'll tell you that after the break. Stay here. He brought Showtime to Los Angeles, but he is Kevin Durant's point guard on his all-time NBA team. First Take is presented by Chase Freedom. The card is for the essentials. The cash back is for the fun. And in part by National Mortgage Lender Quicken Loans. Home by Refi Power. Kevin Durant, who is overseas as a part of Nike promotional tour, was asked by NBA Maniacs who is his all-time starting five, and this is who he came up with. At point guard, Magic Johnson, because he's a triple-double machine. Kobe Bryant, a five-time champion at shooting guard. Small forward is Michael Jordan, no debate there. Power forward Tim Duncan, picking him over Carl Malone because of longevity. And Shaq, who he calls a dominant center. Will, who is your all-time starting five? Humbly disagreeing with Kevin Durant. Here's my starting five. Okay. Magic, the same as KD, running the point. Mm -hmm. Jordan at two. Mm -hmm. LeBron at three. Tim Duncan at four. And then a guy I think is history is underrating as we go forward. Kareem at five. Yeah. I mean, Kareem deserves way more credit than, he, than history has carried forward for him. Will Kane and I unilaterally agree on something. No. Okay. Hey. Same exact starting five. Same exact 25. And I, and I, it's funny you pointed out the, the Kareem thing because that's exactly what I was going to say is I almost immediately was going to put in Shaq and then I was like, wait a second. How are we, as we move farther away from his career, doing the opposite of what we usually do, which is just like rosy colored glasses and glorifying. So mm -hmm. starting five, exactly the same as, as Mr. Keynes. All right, let's take it a step further though. KD said he had to take Kobe over Bird, but you guys both went LeBron wide. I just think LeBron is 
perhaps history's greatest all-around player, from defense to scoring to assists to rebounds. And at the three spot where we have LeBron, that's what I want. I want an all-around player. I think Kobe doesn't play team ball. He's great, but on a team like this, I don't need somebody taking as many shots as Kobe would take. I'll let, that, I'll let Jordan do that. Yeah. And the fact that LeBron has been criticized at times for not wanting to take that killer shot, that, that win the game shot, well, I've got guys, other guys on this team, like Jordan, to take care of that. I want the all-around player that LeBron is. And I take this seriously. I almost take it like I'm standing in you know, the gym, and I actually get to pick my team. Like, we might actually play with this team. That's how I think about it in my mind. It's not co a collection of starting lineup figures where they don't actually play with each other. So I wanted a lineup that I actually thought was comprised of the best players and would actually play well together, which is why LeBron at three makes way more sense with Jordan than having Kobe in there with Jordan because I don't know how that team would play well together. Exactly. So I also feel like we do this weird thing where we're like, five rings equals you are a five-time better player than yeah. someone with one ring. I don't ascribe to that theory. I think a lot of rings is your talent level, but a lot of the other part is like who you played with and, and mm -hmm. the era in which you played. I got to move us on, though, because Serena isn't the only dominant female athlete, and we've been talking a lot about her lately, rightfully so. It's the WNBA season. I want starting five oh WNBA all-time I'm loving this. So I got, I'm glad I came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I got Dawn Staley. I got Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore. Look I got Cheryl Swoops and Lauren Jackson. I could explain them all here, but Swoops changed the game. Tarazi's like the magic of the women's game. Yep. Maya Moore, I'm rocking her kicks right now, so I had to put her on. They're sweet. Dawn Staley, 1996. I asked for your approval on this, Kate. It, I've got Diana Taurasi running, running the point. She's running point. That's right. Cynthia Cooper, Tamika Catchings, Cheryl Swoops, and then how do you leave Lisa Leslie I just off? like Lauren Jackson better than Lisa how Leslie. How do you leave Lisa That's Leslie That's just a personal off. thing. I like Lauren Jackson's game, so... Oh, my know. team's okay? Your you, team's all right. As long as you got Tarazi running the point and yes. you think it's a point forward situation, because otherwise you got you got no like, you, know, you got no Sue Bird on there. No Sue Bird. She's that looking. was my backup. Do you guys know that Tarazi actually isn't playing in the WNBA this season? She's, she's resting for Russia, who plays her ten times more than the WNBA. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. to be a topic some other time. Thank you guys so much for hanging <laughs> with us here on First Take. Will, Kate, fun as always. Great Thank to have you. you guys. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. And Skip and Stephen A. will be with us. Enjoy your Labor Day.